Welcome back again, everybody. Hit your host with the most. Man, listen. Under this whole lockdown thing, I know a lot of people right now just want to go outside. I'm not talking about go outside like going to your backyard or your front yard. I'm talking about people want to go outside. Y'all see what time of the year it is? Think about what we're usually doing at this time of the year. For those of us who live in places where it's winter and we have a genuine winter season where it gets cold and freezing and snow is on the ground or it rains a lot or it's just not beach weather, tropical feeling weather, the sun isn't out shining every day. This is the time of the year when we would usually be outside breathing deep breaths, taking in fresh air of a new season. You understand? And this is the time of the year for those who are very social people. This is the time of the year when things would be kicking into high gear. All the part of them turn up now. This time of the year. And you could imagine being in a place like Jamaica, where party, party, party is the thing, and we have the best parties in the world. And not just that, even just some social gathering, even if you are the type that just, you know, like for chill out on the ends with a friend, um, pull up to a chair, play a game, a domino, or just sit on there and talk and beat two red stripe, whatever the case may be, this is the time of the year. But guess what? We can't do it. So, Tana your yard is what we have been promoting under the circumstances. People, I'm not a lie. That one here, heartbreaking. So, Tahira steals her last memory of her mother. This was printed in a Jamaica Gleaner, by the way. Her last memory of her mother. 43-year-old Colleen Myers, alive, was of the distressed mother rushing towards her drowning frame and clinging to her hand in a bid to repel the deadly clutch of the Rio Grande in Portland. Then she blacked out. When Steele came to, this is the daughter talking, you know, when the daughter came to, she raised her head to see people attempting to pump water from her mother's chest. All right, you just miss Wagwan Yaso. This is a mom that pretty much gave her life trying to save her daughter from drowning. She ended up drowning in the process. She was able to apparently hold her daughter long enough for rescuers to get there and save her daughter. But a death clutch is what she used because she completely passed out in the process. And I can't help to think, but she passed out because she, uh, she had uh, taken in so much water. But her determination, a mother's sheer determination to save her child's life, kept that hand gripped on her daughter until she was rescued. I was just there bawling until I couldn't move, she said. I asked someone to help me over to her, please, because she just couldn't move. She was paralyzed. Her thought process paralyzed her body just watching them pumping water out of her mom. She had to ask someone to help me, help me um, go over to her, please, so I can see her, please. But she never opened her eyes, she said. The distraught daughter con con recounted to the gleaner. Steele, Myers, and a few others had journeyed from their community in Springfield, St. Thomas, to the beautiful shores of Portland to enjoy a day out. If you've never been to Portland, Jamaica, then I don't know what to tell you, but Portland truly is beautiful. I mean, the whole of Jamaica truly beautiful. That is why I started this video off by saying that it's hard to stay inside. And you see, we thought this stuff was going to go on for a month, this whole lockdown thing, and then curfew in some places. And then we thought it was going to go on for two months. And now people are getting antsy and they want to go out the house because it has gone too long and we don't know how long it's going to last. That is the kind of mind frame that is kicking in in a lot of people right now. And we're still promoting Tanaya Yard. Anyhow, Menanga Ad. 
insult to injury. So, they went out to enjoy the beautiful shores of Portland. Just, you know, a day out. Mother, daughter and a few other people. The ominous decision was in breach of the Disaster Risk Management Act. Which prohibits gatherings at swimming and swimming in beaches and rivers at the moment. So right away enough people are saying, well, they were doing something wrong. They should have turned at them yard. They should have stayed home, right? And they were out actually trying to do something that the Gleaner is saying at the moment that activity was actually a breach of the disaster risk management act the disaster risk management act there's a part of it that prohibits gatherings at and swimming in beaches and rivers in other words beaches and rivers are off limits but that is where they wanted to go today we had left out to go to nanny falls but we heard that it was closed and when we were on our way so i suggested we go there instead, Steele said. There meaning the place where, at the Rio Grande, where all this took place. So the 21-year-old, who is also the only child of her mother, God, man. You know, so probably that's why she even hold on to her, so, because her only child. Could you put your, your mind in the frame of a mother that is watching her only child about to... Slip away to certain death. And she's so frightened and so determined to save her only child. She grab on Panara and whatever grab she could get, she never let go, even to her own death. I'm unable to talk about everything and share my best memories right now, she said, because of the emotions. But we were very close. We went everywhere together. The daughter said, recalling the moment, a peaceful Sunday afternoon turned fatal. Still said that she was waist deep in the water when the currents just started to pull her away. Still said that she suddenly began spinning around and around in a whirlpool until she went under and then she was gasping for life. This is the surviving daughter explaining the situation that she was caught in while this was going on. Can you imagine? You stand up in our water, waist deep, right? You're at the beach. And suddenly, you start just spin round, spin round, so, and then get dragged under the water. That is some strong current. When she emerged, she saw her mother running to her aid. After others had got into trouble, I came up and I cried out, help. And I saw my mother sending someone to come get me because she can't swim. The mother cannot swim either. And I know people are going to say, well, if them can't swim, why them gone in the water for so flow? She was in waist deep. A lot of us who can't swim, well, I can swim and I can swim very well, but a lot of people who can't swim go in waist deep water all the time. It's not like she was in the water up to our chest, up to our neck. It's not like she was swimming in water that was deeper than her height. She went in some waist deep water, but sudden currents changed all that. This could also be a learning experience for those of you who cannot swim, but you go to the beach and you stand in waist deep water. That currents can come from under the water. It has happened to me many times before. I am, however, lucky enough to be able to swim and I know how to get out of the current. So save this for your future days. You can't swim. Go where the water is up to your knee. And that's about it. That's just us learning from this experience. Anyways, she said she came up crying and she cried out, help. And she saw her mom sending someone to come get her because her mother couldn't swim. And she knows her mother can't swim. 
But the person that came to help her just couldn't manage as he was also going under the water. Still, set, so do you, now you feel the desperation because the person you sent to help, you are watching that person fail, right? Steele said she held her mother's hand and feet on their way to the hospital, hoping that she would survive. But she later got the crushing blow that her mom, heartbeat, had stopped. Now, when we say heartbeat had stopped, we mean it was the expiration of life. Speaking with the gleaner from their home in St. Thomas, Steele's uncle, Connie Kelly, Remember the caring nature of his older sister. And he said that we were very close. We lived together for over 30 years. And every day she leave out or me leave, she message and call me every minute to check up on me. Oh, man. Commander of the Portland Police Division, Superintendent Dwayne Wellington, is warning residents against flouting the Disaster Risk Management Act, which governs the Jamaican government's COVID-19 restrictions. In other words, pay attention to the rules, laws, and regulations that have recently been put in place. Tanayo Yad. It is an unfortunate incident which could have been avoided if only People would adhere to the rules and regulations. This is what Wellington told the Gleaner. This is a clear indication that prevention is better than cure. Janu. Listen, I'm not going to beat this one out anymore. And I definitely don't want to keep talking and adding insult to injury. My thoughts and prayers are with the surviving members of her family. And may her soul rest in peace. She really went out like a champ trying to at least save her child, even knowing that she herself cannot swim. But she gave it her best fight. And I can't, I can't even help to think what her daughter's thought process might be right now. You know, if me never go in the water, me and the mummy wouldn't. Or I, I don't know. I don't know. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments, like and share and all that stuff. But more so, leave your comments in the comment section below and let's talk about this one. Are you staying inside or are you starting to get cabin fever and starting to feel like you yourself need to go outside and explore the outdoors now, regardless of whatever rules they have in place? It's SoFlo TV. I'm out. Walk good people. And be careful. Peace.